Ruby Six, the Illuminati, Part One, Lubu Wa. In a galaxy, on a planet, in the desert, in a village at the end of a dirt road, is a building made of stone. Up the steps to the second floor is an open door. In a room, in a chair, watching the moon rise through the bars on the window, sits the mentor. This. Is her story. I may as well start at the beginning. It all started back on my planet, Sumanula, crossroads of the galaxy. I live, or should I say, I used to live in Gala City. It's the media center of the planet. We call it the seat of ceaseless chatter. They say the media merely reflects our own chattering minds. In other words, the media is created by chattering minds to feed other chattering minds. The endless yakety yak that has nothing to do with your life, except that it's become a very big part of your life. It's all the crap that you don't need to know, and you can't control. But there's always hope. Maybe things will get better in the future. Except you're in the future. You think it's getting better? By the way, my name is Ruby. I'm a galactic gumshoe, a good one. The wall lit up. Yeah, wall. What's up? Hyperthought, Ruby. Oh yeah. Put on your thinking cap. Okay. Hyperthought, in case you didn't know, and I'm certain you didn't, is a way of communicating across space. The problem with talking to someone a few solar systems away is the time factor, but with thoughts, it's instant. The thinking cap is a helmet shaped like a dunce cap. It's a way of communicating across space without the delay. No one likes delay. Okay, I'm ready. Let's have it. Rippling across the wall was a large, pointed head with squinting almond eyes, pinkish white skin, and a rather small mouth out of which emerged a pretty big voice. Ruby, that's me. I am Ubu. Glad to meet you, Oop Boop. I am of the Ilubu. The what? I am from the planet Ilubu. Really? You know the Ilubu? Well, what I know is that visitors aren't welcome. <laughs> visitors are welcome. Oh? But to visit, one must be invited. Yeah, I see. You are invited. Why the invitation? I wish to hire you, Ruby. To do what? To seek and to find truth. Uh huh. And what truth are you looking for? Your friend will advise you. What friend? Professor T. J. Taru. You know Taru? I hope we will be meeting soon, Ruby. Yeah, we'll see. Yes, we will. Wall. Yes, Ruby. Find Taru. Ruby, where are you, Taru? The digital circus. Oh, so who is Oop Boop? So who is Oop Boop? Oh, Oop Boop. Yeah, what's he want? Have you ever heard of the Illusionites? I don't think so. They are the followers of the predominant belief system on their planet, Ilubu. Wow. Are they shaped like pears? Pear shape? Yes, they are. I- How'd you know? I just knew. So you saw him. Yeah, I saw his pointed head. I see. Good deduction. As I was saying, the Illusionites are those Ilubuwas who are followers of a philosophy known as illusionism. Okay, so what does Ubu want from me? He wants you to prove that something actually exists. Well, can't they all get their little pointed heads together and prove it themselves? No, because they cannot see beyond their own illusions. Well, who can? So what exactly does he want? He wants you to be part of the circus. I met Taru at the Digital Circus. You may already know the Digital Circus is a band of techies, hackers, dropouts who scrounge for parts at electronic dumps, and they build mechanical devices, creatures, all kinds of weird electronic things, and they perform. It's a real circus, but a pretty bizarre one. 
The digital circus was invited to a Lu Bu Wa, and from what I heard, that's a big deal because no one gets invited there. And when Taru told me what they'd pay, I started to get interested. And not only that, you'll be part of my team, Ruby. What team? Well, you and me and Andor and what's his face? What's his face? Oh no, yeah. not that little rat. Roden Kapoor. My Kapoor. Too. He's changed, Ruby. What's he changed? His underwear? No, 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 no. He's become, dare I say, almost trustworthy. Kapoor, ha! And besides, we owe him, Ruby. Owe him what? Kapoor saved our lives. When? Uh, I can't exactly. Oh, you're dreaming, too. Well, maybe it wasn't a dream, or maybe I have a soft spot in my head for the little Ruby. I don't know how many times I saved his little rat skin. Oh, just think, Ruby, it'll be you and me and Andor the, and the rodent. Why, it'll be like old times. Yeah. I'm told it's an incredible planet, Ruby. All those chubby illuboos with their pear-shaped bodies and four legs wobbling too. Four two. legs? Well, I don't know what they do with the other two. Mm. Yes, those little pink pears waddling about among the lush flora in the farm. I thought it was a desert planet. Oh. Oh. Well, are you part of the team, Rube? Well, the pay is impressive. I thought you liked that. When are you leaving? Tomorrow, 3,200 hours. Yeah, that gives me time to pack. Ah, oh, just one more thing, Ruby. What's that? Puns. What puns? Pear puns. Pear puns? I don't want to be stuck on a planet of pear-shaped people with you spewing out your pear no, puns. I've, I've never. True. Look at me. I'm looking at now you, Tell me. Ruby. Who ever heard of a pear pun? No one. But I know you, Ruby. Ruby. Don't you think you're being a little paranoid? I know I don't think I'm... What was that? <laughs> See? Oh, well, maybe I am a little paranoid. But apparently. Yes, I... Uh, what? <laughs> Oh. I gotta go back. <laughs> yeah, you do that, Ruby. Taru. Yeah, what? Do you mind if I bring along a shoot shoot? A, a sh- what's that? Some kind of a weapon? No, no, it's a pair of shoes. A pair of. Oh, <laughs> God. That's. I knew it. I knew it. I, that's the worst pun I ever heard, and you can't sink any lower than that, Ruby. Yes, I can. Oh, yeah? You think so? Can I bring two keys? Can you bring what? Two keys? Two keys. Yeah, a pair of keys. A pair of. A pair of. Oh, <laughs> oh pair of. I, 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 I told you pair so. Pair of. Pair of. What have I got? <laughs> And so Ruby, the galactic gumshoe, Professor T.J. Taru, the archaeologist, Andor, the techie, and Rodan Kapoor join the digital circus on their mothership, and they blast off for the planet of Ilubu Wa. Ruby? Yes, Kapoor? What is my assignment? Ask Taru. He's in charge. Really? You'll be assisting Andor. Oh, and what is Andor doing? He's assisting Ruby. And uh, what is Ruby doing? She's assisting me. Ah, and what are you doing? I'm telling people who to assist. Oh. Andor. Yes, Ruby? What do we know about these Alubus? Well, not much, Ruby. Very few human beings have ever set foot on Alubu Ra, and their accounts differ greatly. It's as though each was on a different planet and had met a totally different people. Their descriptions of the cities, the culture, the art, the government, all contradicted each other. Why? I don't know. But there was one element they did agree on. The visitors described a strange presence or field of energy, almost like an aura that surrounds each Ilubu. And if you get close enough to step within their field, your perception of reality is, well, changed. What do you mean, changed? It's altered in some way. You mean their presence takes you over or something? No, apparently not. It's just that you experience the way they see things. But you just said everyone who visited that planet came back and couldn't agree what they saw. Yes. You mean every Ilubu sees reality differently? I I don't know. Huh. It may be that their perception of reality is so much stronger than humans that when we step into their field, our perception is aligned with theirs. We fall under their spell or something? Well, maybe it's more like becoming a Marxist or a Freudian or anything where the great mind is so powerful that we not only accept what their view is, we arrange our belief system so we begin to see things through their filter. So the Ilubus aren't different. Well, don't forget, most Ilubus follow the philosophy of illusionism. What's illusionism? I can tell you a little about that, Ruby. I just received a transmission from Oop Boop. Well, did he say why he wants me there? Not quite. But Oop Boop did explain their illusionism. Here we go. Our universe was formed by the Big Boom. 
I, I thought it was the big bang. We of the illusion, boo. Believe everything is illusion. We are asleep in the big dream of the big boo. That is our belief. That is why we are called illusionists. We may be asleep in the big dream, but one day we will awaken. We will be one of the chosen. The Creator will lean over us as we sleep and suddenly say, Boo! Boo! <laughs> we are aware that all beliefs, including our most sacred beliefs, may become stagnant, atrophied energy. After many centuries of peace and relative tranquility, our society is threatened. We are being manipulated by a secret society. Oh, yes. A secret society that is exploiting the old illusions, the myths of Ilubu Wa, replacing them with new illusions. Are you following any of this, Ruby? Yeah, I think so. This secret society is known by many names among those who believe in conspiracies, but one name will suffice. And that is... And that is? The Illusionati. The Illusionati? They have the power to topple governments, to bring about collapse of the markets, to create chaos, to exploit our fears. But what is their intent? Is it simply to have wealth and power? Is it world domination? Or is there something even greater they see? Even greater? Ooh. But our people refuse to believe there is a conspiracy called... The Illusionati. The Illusionati? Some of us may be members of the Illusionati and not realize it. Huh? But I believe it is possible for an outsider, who is alien to our manipulative ways, to traverse this web of illusions and penetrate the secrets of the Illusionati. That is all. So, Upoop wants us to find some secret society that's so secret their own members don't know they're in it? What I don't understand, Ruby, is why does Upoop think we can see through the Alubu's illusions? Well, we don't share their belief system, so maybe we can. Who knows? Why are they called the Bubble People? The what? Bubbly People. I believe they're called the Bubble People because of their milieu. Oh, they smell? The Alubus have a name for it. They call it the Nakri. Is this Nakri something we'll be able to see? Depends on their son. What about their daughter? <laughs> Ow! Ah, oh, we're coming out of hyperspace. We were in hyperspace? I thought it was the caffeine. Look, guys, if we're all supposed to be part of the digital circus, what roles are we faking? Well, Andor is part of the techie team, so he'll play himself. And what about Kapoor? What's he gonna do? How about the high wire? No, 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 I don't want to be a trapeze monk. Not again. Why not? The other monks never catch me. Yeah, but you made a lot of people laugh. Yeah, all the way down. But you got the best laugh when you hit the ground. I know. It cracked me up, too. Huh. What about you, Taru? Well, maybe I'll pass myself off as myself. That's the best you can do? Well, maybe I'll do a presentation on the ancient monsters that once roamed our beloved planet. I didn't know there were any prehistoric monsters on Sumanula. True, but after all, the circus is showbiz. The greatest show on Earth! We're not on Earth. The greatest show off Earth? I know the perfect disguise for Kapoor. Uh-oh. A clown. Kapoor the clown. What do I do? Wear a big honking nose and funny ears and flappy shoes and paint my face nah, and... Nah, just go as yourself. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ruby. She's got a point. You know how Ruby always says, stop clowning, Kapoor. Well, this is your opportunity to keep on clowning. Ooh. You mean Kapoor the Clown? Yeah! Why or, not? Or Kapoor the Super Clown! Or Kapoor the Super Duper Clown! Shut oh. up! What will oh. you be going as, Ruby? Oh, I don't know, maybe a bareback rider? Ooh, that sounds silly! You need something more death defying, Ruby. <gasps> Just breathing is death defying enough for Kapoor. <laughs> Well, I guess we're arriving at our destination. You know, I think you should be something other than a professor. I like being a professor. You get respect, and that's something we all need lots of, Ruby. All right, be a professor. But why not a professor of something no one ever heard of, Taru? What has no one ever heard of? 
Ruby? I don't know. Keep your ears open. True. And there before them, like a giant bubble floating in space, is the planet of Lubu Wa. The mothership glides into orbit as the little piglets detach themselves and scurry on down to the welcoming planet below. It appears fairly civilized, at least on the surface. Yes, it does. Why, their buildings are no more than a couple of stories high, with lush green and purplish vegetation growing in between. It's like a city built in a park. They may not share our obsession with technology. They aren't capable of space travel. I know, they don't even have satellites. What? No dishes? No dishes, no microwaves, nothing. How do they cook? They must have to eat everything raw. Okay, guys, put your translators on. Check. Check. Kick. From here on, we're talking Ilubuin. Ilubuin. Their main city, Basun, looked pretty bland at first. Their buildings were the same color as the desert they were built on. But when you got closer, you saw there were different textures, subtle colors with labyrinthine designs carved all over the buildings. I got the impression that artists were actually appreciated here. I knew I was on an alien planet. The streets were a maze. There wasn't any kind of recognizable grid. You were constantly zigzagging around something or other, a hill, a boulder, even a giant cactus tree. Why build a city among all these rocks? The tallest buildings were maybe three or four stories high. None of the buildings were as high as the trees. I like trees. We still got a few of them back on my planet, Sumanula. But on old Earth, they got rid of them. Ah, sometimes you'll see one growing on the edge of some shopping mall. Yeah, back on old Earth, they cut them down and built microwave towers. Microwaves have replaced breathing. Everyone's brains are being baked, but who cares? They don't. This planet, Alubu Wa, is pretty much a desert planet. The trees are a sort of spiky palm. Oh yeah, I forgot to finish about the buildings. They're not the square boxes or shipping carton architecture humans like to be packed in. These look more like the weird boulders they're built among. Some are roundish or dome-like or a kind of pleasing lump. I don't know how the race of beings who live here, the Alubus, evolved to look like they do. Their arms almost reach to the ground. That's because their legs are so short. They're pear-shaped people, no neck to speak of, kind of pointed head. They waddle from side to side when they walk. They're kind of cute. The Alubus are shorter than we are and wider especially in the bottoms, but uh, come to think of it, back on old earth. Most people have become pretty pear-shaped with bottoms that need two chairs to sit on, but that's not evolution, that's junk food. I swear, earth's gonna have rings like Saturn, only they won't be made up of space dust. They're made up of gobs of fried grease. Well, let's get back to Ilubu Wa. We settled down outside the city, went through decontamination, Met the Ilubu delegates, a chubby little row with nodding heads and official smiles. And then the digital circus got to work, setting up the inflatables, the big and little tops that, by the way, didn't look at all out of place among their roundish boulders and plump buildings. Welcome to Ilubu. A pleasant-looking pear shape came waddling through the crowd. Nice to see you. I'm Oop. Oh, yeah, well, I'm here. How can I help? Can we speak in private? Yeah, I got an inflatable. Come on. The Illusionati Ruby. You want me to prove they exist? Most definitely they exist. But your people don't buy that, right? They believe the Illusionati is merely another conspiracy theory, Ruby. So you want proof? I want you to find out exactly who they are and what they are scheming. You think an outsider can do that? You will be an honored alien guest. You will be invited into the most influential houses. So I'm wined and dined. Then what? You expect me to sneak upstairs and pick their safe, see what secrets they've stashed? (laughs) No, no, no. Ruby, you know so little about the Ilubu. Well, you keep your planet off limits. What do you expect? Come close to me, Ruby. Okay. I took a step and stopped. Closer, please. I didn't know what he was up to, but I figured whatever it was, I could handle it. I was wrong. (laughs) 
It was like stepping through a membrane. Like I wasn't in the room anymore, but inside him or part of him. I stepped into a swirl of patterns, impressions, images. I slowed it down, and then it started to form into a kind of labyrinthine design, reminiscent of the ones on the buildings. Somehow it felt very ancient, mystical. The past, the present, the future all slowly tumbling around me. I stepped back out. And what did you feel, Ruby? Felt like I stepped inside a bubble. And? Well, at first it was a little disorienting, but when I slowed it down, I felt I could almost read your thoughts. But could you? No. Oh. But I did get a sense of how you see things. And you were not frightened? Me? No, why? It may be confusing if you are not accustomed to our ways. What happens when you get together in a crowd with all your bubbles bumping up against each other? We retract our field so it does not mingle with others. It is not healthy for us to do so over extended periods of time. Is this what you call the Nacri? The Nacri, oh yes. You're hoping I'll be able to read your people's thoughts, is that it? Do you believe that is possible? Well, I don't see how. What I saw in you was alien to me. Your first exposure, of course. The patterns I saw. Is that the way you guys think? You don't think in words, but what? Geometric designs? Words are simply codes for carrying the images for someone else to decode and reconstruct in their minds. But we of the Ulubu, when we seek direct communication, we merge. We allow our presence, our nacri, to intermingle, and then there are no lies, Ruby. So you can read each other's minds? Not read, intuit. Well, if you can do that, why do you need me? You will be able to get close to them, closer than I. Yeah, and how's that going to happen? As an honored guest, you will be invited into the houses of the most powerful families. You will meet the highest and most influential of our people. And when you are physically close, you will step within their nacri and you will intuit their truth. What's the chance they're going to be able to read me? What do you mean? You of the humans, you have no nacri. Do you trust him, Ruby? I never trust anyone who hires me. But I hired you once. Hmm. Oh, I see. <laughs> and where's Andor? Out in the field. They're puffing up the big top. Oh, yeah? It's a big inflatable with lots of little ones attached that stick out in all directions. It looks like a giant octopusy. They're throwing a party for us tonight, Ruby. We're going to meet all the big pears. Good. I wonder what they eat here. Anything that moves and a lot that doesn't. Just like back home. <laughs> hmm. I've always hated official gatherings, dignitaries, all that crap. But this one gave me the opportunity to slip into something a little revealing, to check their pulse, so to speak, see what we had in common. We were camping out at the digital circus in our own little inflatable caravan when TJ announced... Well, looks like our limousines have arrived, Ruby. Those were limos? They looked like big weenies. They did look a little like sausages linked together. Oh yeah, the Chorizo Express. Look, the limousines have little feet. They did have little feet. If you can imagine a wiener with centipede feet, you get the picture. But it got us to the reception, and I got to admit, it was a very smooth ride. The reception was in an impressive building. They seemed to prefer round shapes or oblong, no sharp corners. Maybe their pear-shaped bodies had something to do with it. But if a pear shape prefers an oblong, why do humans prefer corners and sharp edges? Humans aren't square. Aren't they? Or maybe it's because we like to put things in little boxes. Good point, Kapoor. And speaking of points, look at the points on that blonde over there. You mean her pointed head? Yeah, yeah, that too. What do you think of her? She's solid. Yeah, stacked like a brick pyramid. I don't think I can tip her over. I wouldn't try, Kapoor. So as I was saying, there were no windows, but one wall was open to the desert. Or I thought it was. It was a gigantic floor-to-ceiling screen with an image of the desert. 
Then I realized it was a diorama, a sort of a holographic painting you can walk into. The Ilubus were dressed in their formal finest. For the men, it was their version of a tuxedo, robes of all kinds of shimmering colors. The women were more muted, subdued, more earthy, not so colorful. I wondered who ran things around here. They appear to be polite little pairs, Ruby. Yeah, let's work the room. Let's see what we can pick up. There's a cute little pair over there. Why don't you see if you can pick her up, Kapoor? This isn't what I meant, guys. Oh. And or... Yes, Ruby? Check out the way they communicate. Are they using a local thought text or an implantophone, you know? Well, I thought Oop Boop demonstrated to you how they communicated yeah, 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 with... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how do I know he's telling me everything? All right, Ruby. Ruby Six. Illusionati. Ruby, TJ Taru, and or Rodan Kapoor and the Digital Circus have been invited to a small desert planet inhabited by pear-shaped beings. No one but Oop Oop knows who they really are. We join them at a reception in the Great Hall of Hoo-Ha. And now, Part 2, The Dark Angel of Doom. Hello, Oop. Oop? Boop. Yeah. Ruby, you will see how the nacre of the Ilubu has been contracted for this formal occasion. You're saying I won't be able to get close to anyone here? Exactly. Well, that's the way it is at parties. Shall I introduce you to some of the more important personages, Ruby? Why not, Oop? Boop. As we maneuvered across the oval room, I... Oh, sorry. Bump into someone to check him out, but they'd withdraw their knackery too quickly to get any impressions. Meanwhile, Taru and the rest of the gang were schmoozing around somewhere. A waiter came by with some sort of pear liqueur, a fermented cactus juice that was quite sublime. I decided to step outside for a breath of fresh desert night air, but I didn't realize it was a holographic diorama. It wasn't the outside I had stepped into, it was the wall. Ow! Whoa, there! I turned around, and there stood a pear-shaped young lady. Her pointed head almost came up to my nose. She was taller than most, of course. Two of her feet were in high heels. The other two, I... I don't know. I don't know where they were. Tucked away somewhere. She smelled good, like the desert night, all in bloom. As my eyes moved down her pearly body, I could see she had a pleasing shape for a pear. She even had a waistline. In fact, I found the rest of her lines weren't bad either. Here, let me help you. She drew close as she placed her tiny hand on my bruised forehead, her nakri, her aura, her bubble, her god knows whatever that heavenly thing was, opened up in a strange, tingling ecstasy engulfed me. I was slowly swallowed and rapidly enraptured. The soft fragrances of jasmine, honeysuckle, rare desert blooms, and other delicate scents caressed my nose. I could hear music, strange, haunting, like some ethereal waltz. The ballroom split open. We were dancing across the desert dunes. She smiled. What a smile. Radiant, a golden glow, igniting the bubble we shared as little bells tinkled through every cell in my body and soul. Swallowed by her nakri, I was like a bee sinking into her nectar. She was the flower opening, receiving me, giving me... Do you feel better? She stepped back, her bubble contracted. And I was alone. So terribly, utterly alone. I said, do you feel better now? Uh, no. No, I need more. No, you don't. No, I do. More. Need more. <laughs> Please, just a little more. I think you're fine. Uh, My name is Sue Fu. Sue Fu. And you? Taru. T.J. Taru. Taru? Professor T.J. Taru, but to you, just Taru will do. What does T.J. mean? What do I mean? Oh, 
Oh, you mean what is TJ? Yes. Oh, um, T is for Tommy and J is for Jolly. Tommy Jolly Teru? You could say that. Are you pulling my leg? Which one? Your people have so many. <laughs> <laughs> It was nice meeting you, Teru. <laughs> wait, wait. Sufu, please. What? One final touch from your sweet scented honeysuckle palm. Where shall I touch you? Other than my heart and soul. My lips. One touch. As she stepped close once again, her sweet tinkling nakri engulfed me. Angel's sung guitars, strummed violins, swayed her delicate hand, reached up as one long, slim finger extended out and settled upon my lower lip. <sighs> as Su Fu looked at me, her two dewy iridescent almond eyes twinkled in the desert diorama starlight. I waited for her life nourishing smile, but Su Fu did not smile. She looked so. What was that look? Wispy? Bewildered, perplexed, none of the above. All too soon her hand withdrew, and she was gone. <laughs> Kapoor here, Rodat Kapoor. I too was mingling among the little pear peoples, who are even smaller than me. I can beat them up. <laughs> There was this one round and obviously important personage who shook like a barrel of jello when he laughed. He was talking to Ruby, so I went over to see what was so funny. Ruby! Hello, Rodent. Rodent. That's no longer funny, Ruby. Is this the notorious Rodent, Kapoor? Rodent! Rodent! Oh, Rodent. What do you mean, notorious? Ambassador Woogie, meet R.F. Kapoor. Ambassador? What does R.F. mean? Rat face. <laughs> All these years, and she still thinks it's funny. Oh, there's someone else I wanted to meet, Ambassador. Hey, Taru, come here. Yes, Ruby. Meet Ambassador Woogie. Woogie? Certainly. Ambassador, this is Professor Taru. I've heard so much about you, Professor. About me? Not from Ruby. Yes, Ruby tells me that you hold a PhD in puns. I beg your pardon? A, a, a full professor of puns. Ruby said that. Uh, we Ilubus have never been exposed to your punnery. Lucky Ilubu, you. Uh, Ruby has translated some of your most treasured fun. My puns? Uh, the whole mole people. Oh, you mean Moliere and his moldy puns. It's nice to see your language is so free. Oh, yeah. Puns are part of free speech. It is? You might say it's one of our basic fundamental rights. Fundamental rights? How low can you sink, Ruby? You're about to see, Teru. Professor, what do they call a scholar of puns? A scholar of puns? It's called a pundit. A pundit? Oh. A pundit. <laughs> are there words in your language? that are pun-proof? Pun-proof? Ambassador Woogie. Uh, yes, Ruby. Do you know what they call a man who exudes a smelly pun? Uh, a pun gent. A pun gent. Uh, pun -gent. <laughs> Or when a pun goes flat. Oh. Like most of yours. A puncture. Uh, oh, a puncture. Or if you kick a pun when it's down, uh, it's called a pun. Kick a pun. Oh, gag. Uh, 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 but when you use a pun... In your language. We call it punctuation. Punctuation. Oh, not spare me. Good Lord. <laughs> And when you use a pun uh, for effect. It's called a punch. <laughs> a punch. Barfing. <laughs> Barfing. Uh, can the human mind endure so many puns? You mean, do we get punchy? Punchy! Oh, oh they're all up to you. The law against the use of pun. They ought to bring back capital punishment. Capital punishment. Oh, that's capital. Oh, very good, Professor. Very good. Uh, well, yeah, if you say so, uh, Ambassador Woogie. <laughs> Oop Oop figured it'd be easier for me to meet some of the bigwigs, the influential families, if I was the star of the digital circus. Taru thought it was a great idea. Kapoor went along with it. But what exactly was I supposed to star as? 
We got together with Andor, the chief techie at the Digital Circus. We'll have to create something just for you, Ruby. Yeah, but we'll have to figure out what Ruby can do. She can blast people, hey. Oh, shut up, Kapoor. Okay. Ruby, you remember the first time we met the mole people? Who could forget those big, furry, m m m monsters Yes, they did st stutter, but r remember, Ruby, they had a game called the... C Cosmic Pinball. Yeah, you got me to play it and it almost killed me. But that's what made it exciting. For you, And <laughs> No, no, not just for me. The mole people loved it, Ruby. The Digital Circus could create something like Cosmic Pinball. How about a game that won't kill me? We'll make it safe. But they'll have to think it's gonna do you in, Ruby. That's what makes it fun. Ooh, I like it. Yeah, you would. So what do we call this game? I know. Death to Ruby. <laughs> Ow! You promised. That didn't hurt. It did hurt. Okay, look, you do it to me. Hit the great ruby on the head? Yeah. But I'd have to stand on the chair. Well, go ahead. What's the catch? No catch. You can slow time. Yeah? You'll move. So? That's not fair. Wait a minute, the little rodent's got something. I do? Yeah, sure, something big and terrible attacks Ruby. It's about to squash her into an oozy puddle, but instead she slows time, and at the last possible hair breath of a moment, Ruby escapes. Ooh. And if I don't escape? Oh, come on, Ruby, you always escape. I can design a failsafe. Well, there you go. Okay, so what do we call this game? How about Ruby Plays the Pinball of Death? Nah. nah. I know. What? Ruby Shakes the Mighty Death Rattle. Nah. nah. Well, how about Ruby Versus the Angel of Death? Hmm. Not bad. What is it? I don't know yet. What if a big angel comes down from the heavens, sees Ruby, and beats her mercilessly with its cast iron wings? Just kidding. <laughs> Maybe Kapoor's right. What? Maybe it's a merging of Cosmic Pinball and the Angel of Death. Yes, yes, the angel is spitting big flaming hot lava spitballs at Ruby, and she's... Never mind. No, no, that's good, Kapoor. Oh? Ruby escapes everything that's thrown at her, and everyone thinks the game is over, but then the real Angel of Death appears. Oh. And that is Ruby's final challenge. What do you mean, the real Angel of Death? And how is this going to translate? Do the Ilubu have an Angel of Death? Maybe their angel is shaped like a big winged pear covered in feathers. Well, if they don't have angels? Everybody has angels. Hello, TJ. Hello, Angel. He? What are you all doing? We're inventing a game for Ruby. It's called Ruby versus the Angel of Death. Really, Andor? Uh, yes, but we don't know if they have angels. Do they have death? Yes. Then find the counterpart in their language. Oh, that's good thinking, Angel. Do you know what I think you should call it? What? Ruby and the Dark Angel of Doom. Doom? Ooh, this is sounding very scary. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. <laughs> We had five days before the show opened. The techies worked shifts building the Cosmic Angel. They kept trying it out on the robots. Oh darn, there goes another one. They finally got it to stop smashing the robots, but... Ooh, hear that? A crash but no tinkle. I think we got it, Ruby. And or no tinkle doesn't mean that thing isn't lethal. I know, but you can control it. Oh, yeah? How? With a remote. It's part of a suit that you'll wear. It's woven into the fibers. A remote suit? Yes, remote wear. Mm -hmm. By touching different parts of your body, it will alter the game's degree of aggressiveness. So why does it keep crushing robots? We've been testing it at its most extreme setting. Why do we have an extreme setting, Andor? Well, the spectators have to believe it's deadly. How thoughtful. So when do I see the suit? You can see it now. Angel, will you come out? Her angelness will... Model the suit for you. How do I look, Andor? Wow, you look angelless. You're just, uh, that's just, wow. Andor, I don't see a suit. 
You don't? I see an awful lot of angel, but where's the suit? Well, it's a little skimpy. Skimpy? I mean, why bother? Well, men like this sort of thing, Ruby. Yeah, I'm back on Sumanula, but here, who knows what a pair finds appealing. I guess we'll find out, Ruby. I guess we won't, Andor. But Ruby... Listen, I don't care if it's skin tight. I just wanted to cover some skin. Got it? Whatever you say, Ruby. The Dark Angel of Doom was a little ominous. Oop-boop had told us that the Ilubu believed the universe was formed by what they call the Big Boo. The Boo started it with a Big Bang or a Big Boo. It was sort of their equivalent of God or some principle in the universe that had a sense of humor. They believe that when they're not being present, you know, walking around unconscious, lost in thought, whatever, then something will happen to wake them up, like a kick in the pants or an event that startles you, like, you know, like Boo. And of course, death, too, is just another part of the Big Boo. We were all disappointed when we discovered that Ruby and the Dark Angel of Doom translated into their language as Ruby and the Big Boo. They found it curious that we humans love to entertain ourselves by scaring ourselves, but they accepted it as another form of boo. Opening night at the Digital Circus. The inflatable big top is packed with pears. The first night is for the dignitaries, their families, anyone who's anyone on Ilubu Wa. They come from everywhere. All those important Ilubus, their little pear shapes stuffed into the seats, sitting there in anticipation, eager to experience our alien form of entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished Ilubus and other noble life forms, welcome to the Digital Circus! It started with the trapeze monks, swinging in their robes, doing loop-the-loops with the greatest of ease. The Alubus loved it. And then out came the monsters, giant mechanical animals. They're really hollow. They fold up. They're easy to pack. Still, when they're inflated, they look real. There was what we called a wart snort, a big fire-snorting warthog ridden by a scantily clad android. Then a giant T-Rex, sort of leaping lizard covered in feathers called a hachigacha followed by an extremely hairy, curly-tusked, mammoth-looking thing called a rompa stomp. There was a striped saber-toothed clipper snipper and the prancing, razor-hoofed kickaboo. The crowd ooed with delight. Then the clowns came tumbling out. They sassed the beasts who turned on them as the clowns all scattered all but one. Kapoor, the clown. He was one of the silliest clowns I'd ever seen. His little rat-like face was painted in a permanent smirk. I gotta admit, he was the most daring clown, or the most stupid, sassing the mammoth rompa stomp. The beast just stood there, watching Kapoor out of the corner of its eye, as Kapoor kept running around it in circles, showing off, until finally, the beast lifted its back foot and brought it down, flattening poor Kapoor. The clowns came running out with a silly-looking inflatable ambulance. They kept putting Kapoor on a stretcher, but whenever they ran for the ambulance, he fell out the bottom. When they finally stuffed Kapoor into the ambulance, the mammoth lumbered over and sat down, squashing the ambulance flat. The clowns finally hooked Kapoor with a long pole and were pulling him to safety, but the mammoth spotted it, stomped over, and put a foot on top of it. Now, I gotta tell you, clowns don't make me laugh. They're trying so hard to be funny, and they're not. Except this time, I loved it. No matter what they do to distract the beast, it'd end up either standing on or sitting down on Kapoor. <laughs> Nothing like a flat rat, Ruby. Yeah, I think he's still alive. You can see his little arms and legs flailing around every time it steps on him. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Good going, Kapoor! Finally, the clowns came out with a decoy. They pumped it up, wound it up, and it started walking across the ring. Oh, look, an inflatable Kapoor. It was waving its arms, giving the beast an obscene gesture when the mammoth board reared up on its back legs and came down with both front feet on the inflatable Kapoor. Oh, Kapoor exploded. Wow, kaboom, Kapoor. The beast was so disappointed seeing these little pieces of Kapoor all over the place, it finally lumbered off. Meanwhile, the clowns had stuffed the real Kapoor inside a barrel. As the mammoth passed by, it gave the barrel such a kick it went flying across all three rings and bounced out the exit. <laughs> Let's hear it for Kapoor, the collapsible clown! Ho, 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 ho! 
Yes! Let's hear it for Kapoor! What a clown! Kapoor the clown, well, looks like he's finally found his place in the world. Yeah, being kicked out the door. Well, that's the way life ends for all of us, Ruby. And then came the bareback riders riding strange six-legged Ilubu ponies, I guess you'd call them. The riders were all androids. Her angelness was the main attraction. I gotta admit, you got a handful there, Taru. Yes, I did, Ruby. Did? Sad to say, we're going our separate way. Taru, every time you get an android built to fill your desire, she leaves you. Why is that? Well, to be honest, Ruby, I used to blame their programming. Obviously, or so it seemed to me, there was a bug in her somewhere. But as it turned out, the bug was in me. No. Yes, Ruby, and that's the way it is with desires. They always come with a bug in them. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. You finally feel a burning desire. You know what? What? Get bored. Really? Really, Ruby. So what do you do, Taru? Well, obviously you find a new desire. And? And on it goes. Ups and downs and hots and colds. And finally, we were both bored. She was bored with you? It's true. So every time you get what you desire, you get bored? Every time. There's no hope? No hope. None. Every desire comes with a bug in it. The main event, the highlight of the evening, was guess who? The lights dimmed, the ringmaster stepped into the spotlight. Ladies, gentlemen, kind and illustrious Lubus, do we have a treat for you tonight? All the way from the capital of our beloved planet, Sumanula, has come the most spectacular of spectaculars, a performer of no peer, who will defy death as death has never been defied before. She will attempt what no living life form has ever attempted and come out alive. The only one who went up against this magnificent monster were intelligent robots. They were mercilessly crushed to a pathetic pulp. While the crowd was well, distracted, tonight, the rigging concealed the up in the roof of the Big Top silently descended. In the entire galaxy, then, on cue, the ringmaster spread his arms, and there, high above him, a three-dimensional universe unfolded. Ruby and the Dark Angel of Doom. I slipped into my remote suit. It was skin tight, but at least it covered some skin. I know I can't hold my own against the bimbo androids, but standing there looking into the mirror, I must say, I still look pretty damn good. Yeah, thank God for lasers. The lights came up, and there, hovering above their heads, was the universe and me. And overseeing it all, something that we humans found pretty comical, but the Ilubus found pretty frightening, was their own angel of doom, Mr. Boo. It was supposed to be another manifestation of the Big Boo, but this was our version of it. And they'd never seen Mr. Boo depicted as a blood-drinking demon, who was only a giant, pointed head hovering in space, wearing a necklace of skulls and spitting out molten balls of fire. Watch yourself, Ruby! The fire was real, by the way. The game was encapsulated in a force field so the fireballs would flash past and spatter against the sides of the field. The Alubu sat there spellbound, or confused, I couldn't tell which. Apparently, what we had created without our realizing it was something ancient, something mythical, that touched deep down into their psyches, a sort of cosmic knack Cree, the universe contained in a bubble where their heroes of old battled the cosmic forces until they realized the best they could do was save their skin because they could never win. And so, though I didn't know it at the time, the Alubus had come expecting to see me get terminated. Well, the show must go on. I rode on a flat disc that I could control with subtle body movements. My purpose is to dodge whatever is thrown at me, you know, just like life, and use it, that's the way you get the most points, or avoid it and still get some points. That seemed easy enough, but there were a couple of problems. One, they didn't get the remote suit to me until opening night, so I never had a rehearsal, and what they threw at me came totally unexpectedly and was scary as hell. I stepped onto the disc. And here she is! The incredible, the incomparable, the absolutely awesome queen of the cosmos, Ruby! 
<laughs> I had to watch my movements. The remote suit was so sensitive, even a quick breath could alter my direction. And I didn't want to reveal the truth that I could control this monster. Or thought I could. I didn't know what Mr. Boo was going to throw at me, or spit at me, because it wasn't just fiery spitballs it had in its mouth. Stay loose, Ruby. You can rack up points against the Big Boo, but to the Alubus, it's like scoring a point against God. I mean, like, who's kidding who? Stay cool, Ruby. I sailed out on my disc. I felt about as safe as riding on a wafer. Looking good, Ruby. The glowing eyes were following me, all seven of them, all watching me kind of intently, sizing me up, this little gnat circling around its head. The mouth slowly opened. Here comes, Ruby. And out shot a fireball the size of a small comet. I dodged. You got a point, Ruby. There were no cheers from the crowd. Was I making it look too easy? Stay away, Ruby. A lightning bolt suddenly shot out of an eye in its forehead. It zapped so close, my disc went spinning in circles. I just had time to duck as a second bolt shot out of another eye. The problem was, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Watch the tongue, Ruby! Demon's forked tongue flicked out and wrapped around my disc. Yeah, watch it, Ruby! Drawing the disc and me back into its gaping mouth, a mouth lined with molars the size of moving van. I'd seen what it had done to the robots, grinding them into scrap metal, but I couldn't get free of that sticky tongue. Come on, Ruby! I was swatting at my remote suit, trying to figure out what move would unstick that tongue, but nothing was working. Button, Ruby. button! The mouth opened wide and in I went, disc and all. Oh, the molars clamped down with a thundering crash. As I ducked the crunching molars, I saw a button flashing on the disc. I stepped on it. The disc whined and then put out one hell of a jolt. It shocked the tongue, the mouth snapped open, and I was spit out. Oh, there she comes. I tumbled through the air, still stuck to the disc as the mouth roared fireballs at me. I did. I dodged the fireballs, racking up enough points for the mouth to finally snap shut as steam hissed from its nose and ears. And then... the head vanished. And that was it. Game over. The Alubu sat there, stunned. Let's hear for the invincible, the indestructible, the absolutely incredible queen of the cosmos, Ruby! Gosh, that was wonderful, Ruby. I don't know about this game, Andor. I'm Whew. certain you'll find it easier tomorrow. You mean I have to do this every night? No, no, not every night. Good. There are afternoon matinees. Great. But once you're familiar with the routine, you'll be able to practically do it in your sleep. Oh, yeah? Oh. Hey, who's that laid out over there? That's Flat Kapoor. Is he alive? I think so. Okay, I gotta change. The next day, I received about a hundred invitations to some of the influential families on Elubu Wa. So, things were working out as Upoop had planned. But when do things ever work out as planned? Well, not only were the houses open to me, so were the people. They appeared to have nothing to hide. There was the usual small talk, questions about Old Earth, where we came from. Monkeys, I told them. That seemed to explain a lot to them. The Alubus believe they came from seeds. They were seeded on this planet, which makes sense for pear people. By this time, I could step in and out of their necri, their energy field. Sometimes I'd ask a pointed question that would send a ripple through their bubble. I'd pretend innocence as I slowed time. To them, a second or two had passed, but for me... Minutes ticked away as I followed that ripple. Ruby Six The Illusionati Ruby, Taru, Andor, and Rodan Kapoor are on the planet of Alubu Wa. They're attempting to discover whether a secret organization called the Illusionati actually does exist. And now, part three Su Fu and the Coco Ku. I received a speak bubble from Su Fu. Speak bubbles are sent through a network of pneumatic tubes. Speak bubbles vary in size. It depends upon your message, how many words you've stuffed into it. 
To extract the message, you put the bubble between your thumb and forefinger and you squeeze. Good morning, it's afternoon at 10. Whoop! If you squeeze too hard, the message blurts out. But if you squeeze too softly, mm, the message takes forever. Anyway. It was a speak bubble from Su Fu, who I met at the gala reception in the hall of Hu Ha. So, if I can squeeze this bubble correctly, we can all hear what Su Fu has to say. Professor Teru, please meet me this afternoon at two at the Cafe Coco Ku. So I asked the concierge, a rather tall, narrow, pear-shaped life form with a pointed head. Excuse me, where might I find the Cafe Coco Ku? Oh, it's Dr. Teru, yeah. the renowned professor uh, uh, of Yes, puns. yes. <laughs> professor, have you heard the one? No, no, about... no, no, I'm off duty now. Ah. So where exactly is the Café Kokoku? Oh, on Rue Woo Woo. Rue Woo Woo? Oui. Uh, I see. We are practicing French, are we? Oui. All right. And where is Rue Woo Woo? You step out the door. Out the door. Turn left. Turn left. On Rue Wobble Dee Doo. Rue Wobble Dee Doo. Proceed to Rue Nouveau No No. Rue Nouveau No No. Is that the street of New No Nothing? No. Then, right on Rue Nouveau No No. Nouveau No No. Then proceed backwards until you reach Rue Oo Oo Oo. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean right and proceed backwards? Left and proceed forward ah, right. to Rue Woo Woo until you reach the cafe Coco Coo. Coco Coo on the Rue Woo Woo Woo. No, no. No. Two woos. Well, Woo Woo. Woo Woo. To you. It was good to get out of there and have a stroll through this desert city with their sausage like buses slinking by. There are very neat and orderly people, these little pear people. Their street lights hung down like tubular flowers. They're up. Oh, there it is. Cafe Coco Coo on Roo Woo Woo. <laughs> it was packed with Ilubus chatting away. Most had their bubbles drawn up close like a poker hand. Others were romantically entwined about each other all bubbled together, making one big, bubbly nacre. The only way I could get through was by stepping in and out of their bubbles. Uh, excuse me. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, beg your pardon. The chairs are shaped to fit their plump little pear bottoms. Su Fu, too, has a plump little bottom. Now, my tastes normally lean toward the more shapely Barbie android fantasy female physique that has become the ideal that all human females strive for. If they weren't born that way, they have themselves re-sculptured from their Barbie head to their Barbie toes. Yes, the science of laser plastic surgery flesh sculpturing has advanced to the point where every woman can be a Greek goddess. God, I wish they could laser their personalities. The interior walls of the Café Coco Coo reminded me of the holographic diorama in the Hall of Hoo-Ha. Here, too, they had the exquisitely detailed desert scenes that changed imperceptibly and were so real you could feel the sand in your socks. Ah, over there in a the far corner, even though there were no corners in this curving diorama, sat Su Fu. She looked... What was that look? Was it lonely, forlorn, wistful? But now she saw me, she smiled, and that glorious bubble of hers rippled with a bright rainbow iridescence. Was that a blush? Teru? Ah, hello, Sufu. Thank you for coming. Well, I was just... Uh... I stopped. Something had flashed across the desert. It had circled the curved wall of the cafe and vanished in the blink of an eye. Did you see that? No. Something out there in the desert diorama just zipped by. A bird? Yeah, probably a road... Uh, I don't know, a roadrunner. Well, we can't see things that move swiftly. You can't? Our sight is not our main sense. She parted her soft, silky, pinkish hair, and there in the peak of her little pointed head were two small bumps. Hmm, horns? No. <laughs> Knobs? No. Implants? No. Sensors. Sensors? What do you sense? The nacre. The nacre, I see, but not everything has a nacre. Everything has a field of energy. Even me? Even you. Can you read me? Mm, your field is too weak. I'm too weak? I mean humans. Oh, humans. Why haven't you developed it? 
Because we don't believe it exists. You can't see it? Can humans see it among ourselves? No, we can't. You can't see how your presence touches another being? Well, only when I'm trying to score or something like that. What? Well, nothing. Oh, you hold such shells around you. We have to protect ourselves. From what? From each other. Why? Because we hurt each other. Why? Because we don't like ourselves. Do you hurt? Do I hurt others? No, no, I mean, do you hurt? Oh, to be human is to hurt. We may not know ourselves, but we sure know our pain. Well, of course, there's pleasure, but that's a fleeting thing. No. Pain is something solid, something you can stand on, like an old friend. Stand on pleasure, be yanked out from under you, and that's the way it is. You probably been wondering about me. <laughs> As you know, I'm good at being sneaky. That's why they call me a little rat. Now, it may sound unkind, but no, it's a term of endearment, because I can go where others cannot. I am nocturnal. I can see in the dark, but you didn't know that. Of course, I wear night vision goggles. Darkness is Kapoor's friend. I, I'm like a ninja. I'd like to be called that, but I know that Ruby and Teru, they'd twist it like they twist everything. They wouldn't call me Ninzi Kapoor. They'd call me Ninzi Kapoop Kapoor. But they're not going to Kapoop me. Not this time. Yes, that's it. The sneaky shadow. Who knows what weevil lurks in the... Is that right? Of course... I'm only telling you that I'm the sneaky shadow, because if Ruby knew, she'd say some snide, smirky remark like, Oh, look, there goes the little rat shadow, ha ha ha. I'll show him. You just watch me. Watch my sneaky shadow. <laughs>